all right all right all right hello everybody welcome to how to master sql dba with tk and as you already know i'm tk himself if you are new to this uh, uh facebook i keep saying facebook if you are new to our youtube page this is it right here where we post all our videos about sql so let me open my notepad so we can see what we are today what we are doing today all right for the project for today we are going to be creating a window failover cluster you see that okay that is a huge huge project that's a huge project because last time we created a sql account and also we gave an ad account permissions on our service all right let me look at the overview the overview of the project is we need to create always on uh availability groups or always on on sql 01 and we need to make sql 02 the replicas right we want high availability right so sql 01 is going to be a primary server and sql 02 is going to be the replica those are two standalone servers right that we are going to be creating always on high availability on so the first step is to create a windows cluster let me show you something real quick so you understand what i'm talking about why we are creating this because always on piggybacks of windows cluster that is what always on uses right okay let me uh go to our virtual machines right here and let's sql 01 is up and running sql 02 is up and running you see that okay let me go down and check on sql 01 real quick let me cancel that so let me go to the red box this box is called the configuration manager you should know that by now because we have gone to that box many times so i click right here now that i'm in this box right i come here so let not i come here says sql sql server services come over here that says sql server click on it i go to properties once i'm in properties if i click on always on groups you see that always on availability groups read that message right there it says this computer is not a node in a failover what does that mean it means that i cannot click this box to enable always on high availability so it's impossible i need to first create a windows failover so if i cancel here click ok click cancel that's fine cancel and minimize and i go back to sql02 let me click on the red box configuration manager click yes and i do the same thing properties you will see i see the same message right here this computer is not a node in a failover cluster that means that again i need to create a windows failover cluster before i can configure always on on this computer right so that is the first thing i need to do i need to put this note right here because for some reason they start calling this servers notes <laughs> these computers when they are on a cluster they call them notes right i don't know why don't ask me why so i need to put this server slash note on a windows failover cluster before i can come here and enable always on and start with the configuration all right that being said let's click let's uh, close from here and let's minimize from here now how do we create a windows cluster that's the next question i will show you that's why we are here let's go on our domain we are going to create it on our domain so let's go on our domain computer once we are on our domain computer click on your server manager right here once it opens up you go up to where it says tools click on it come down to where it says failover cluster manager you see that click on that so if you remember correctly if you have a good memory when we're doing our installations i ask you to download that failover cluster on all our virtual computers so on the domain sql01 and sql02 that is because i knew that someday in the future right I could predict the future right <laughs> just kidding i knew that we we're going to use it in the future that is why i prepare ourselves for this so once we are here just click right here where it says validate configuration first then you go next 
Now, I want you to add the names of the servers that you want added to this field of a cluster. The first server is going to be that domain, right? Domain in there. Spell it exactly how spell it exactly how it is spelled. Domain, main, not. Okay. Then click on add. If everything is spelled correctly, the name is going to pop up. See right here? Good. Add the second server. Add HDC dash SQL 01. And you click add. Is everything spelled correctly? There you go. Then click add and then add hdc dash sql 02 and you click on add all right smooth we, we have no issue right there so you see okay now go next and then here i want you to click the first one it says run or test right so you just click next and you click next to run the test so right now we are validating those computers to make sure that they are good to go that everything on those computers is set for us to create a cluster it's doing a little validation checking right if there's any issues it's gonna let us know and again please do not worry so much about this because you will never ever create a cluster a server team is going to create the cluster but at least I want you to understand how it works, right? So you should have an idea because you might need to manage that cluster. You might need to add or remove something on a cluster. But to create the cluster like this is very unlikely. You as a SQL DBA, probably not. Unless you are in an environment that you do everything, that you are like the server team, you are like the DBA, you are like the network. I mean, like you are just like a super admin that you do everything right then you might do this but if not not really all right so it's almost there just give it a few more just a few more few more minutes you see okay mm -hmm. i remember the more um computers the more of you the more validation of computers you have to validate the more time it's gonna take right I think we had three, so it's taking a little bit more. Okay, right here it says test pass. That is what we want to see, right? That is what we're praying for. Okay, everything is good. Everything is validated. If we drag everything down, everything is good. So now click on this box right here. It says create the cluster now using the validated nodes, right? It's because they are good to go. There's no reason not, not to use them. So click finish. Once you finish, this new box is going to open up. Click next. And now, important, give it a name. What is the name of the cluster you want to create? If you forgot the name, we have a name for you. If we minimize from here, we go back to our notes, you will see that they say create a cluster called SQL01. You see that right there? So that's the name. So let's go back to our domain. And we're going to call it SQL01 cluster zero one just like that that's the name and important we need to put an ip address if you click on this ip address spot right here it should automatically feels like this numbers this one and this one should be automatic now we are missing this and this okay don't worry if you are missing these numbers right probably you forgot right you forgot the ip address all we have to do is go here in our network right click on it go to your network settings then you go to advance now you go to your drop down you go to edit once you go to edit you now click on internet protocol version 4 double click on it double click now you have those numbers what i want you to copy is to copy this ones right here from here to here so from this one all the way to the 100 so Copy the one that is showing on your screen because mine is different from yours. So mine is gonna be two, two, four, one hundred, right? Okay. So then you can you you can cancel, just cancel and cancel, and then X from here. While you're back from here, click this spot right here, this zero. Cancel that zero, and you put the number that the first number. Mine was two two four. Then now cancel this other zero. 
watch what, I, watch what I'm going to say. Do not put the 100 in there. Remember, the first IP address that we get ended with the 100. The second ended with 101. The third ended with 102. So in there, put 103. So give me a three. Do not put the 100 that you wrote down. Instead, put 103. Very important. All right. Now hit next. Okay. And you hit next again. Now it's it's creating. It's not validating. It's it's creating the cluster. So we are waiting for it to create the cluster. So it's going to take a few minutes to create. Maybe about five minutes or so. So let's just be patient. You see, forming. The IP address, okay, less than that. I mean, that was fast. Click finish. Now we have a cluster created. So this is the cluster right here. You see that it says SQL cluster 01, right? And if you click here where it says note, you will see that the clusters are showing right here. Domain, then this is SQL 01, SQL 02, and also these clusters are up right here. You see that? Those, they are very important right there. So real quick, you can pause this cluster. If you right-click right here, you can pause. You can resume. And I believe you go to more action. For some reason, it won't let me go to more action. But for right now, let's just say you can pause and you can resume these clusters right here. Okay. If I cancel from here, right and i click on my local servers come here now i'm going to have okay i have to refresh it normally i was supposed to have the cluster showing right down here it's not so let me just cancel from here and open it up again okay let's wait for it and let me open the local servers there you go you see it now i have it right here that's my cluster see the cluster name right here and now, if I go on my SQL 01 and SQL 02, you are going to see something is going to change. Let's go on SQL 01. Let's go to our red box, our configuration manager. Let's click on yes. Once we click on yes, and we go back to here, right? We right click, we go to properties, and we click on availability groups. You see that? Now we have a cluster name. We have a cluster in there. It's normal saying that this computer is not a cluster. It's showing us that yes, it's on a cluster. So we can just cancel from here and double check. So let me cancel and double check SQL 02. So that is how you know if your uh, computer is on a cluster or not. So, or if your computer is ready to be configured for always on or not. So this is SQL 02. So we do the same thing. We go to the red box, configuration manager, click on it, click yes. And once we click yes, we right click and we go to properties. Once we are on properties, we click on always on and yes. So cancel, but I'm going to leave this open, right? Because there's something else that I have to do here real quick. Before I do it, let me show you what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to minimize this. I'm not going to close it, minimize it. And I go to my main computer it says change password why do i need to change the password i need to change the password on sql 01 or sql 02 to match that of any of them right so because when you are configuring always on all right the two machines the two servers have to be running on the same service account but right now, the service account that is running SQL 01 is different from the service account that is running SQL 02. So I'm going to change the service account of SQL 01 to match that of SQL 02. Or, or the other way around. I'm going to change the service account of SQL 02 to match that of SQL 01. So if I click right here, I go to properties and I come to you see. Okay. I see right here, okay, I think what I did, I already changed that already, right? Because normally the account that is running here was supposed to say SQL 02 or SQL 02, you see? Yes, that's correct, SQL 02, but it says SQL 01, right? 
if your says equal zero two, I'm going to show you how to change it, right? So look right here. Look right here. If your says equal zero two, don't worry. I'll show you how to change it. Just go to browse, then go to location, click on entire directory, click OK. Then you type CSVC. Then you say check name. Once you check name, right? If your is SQL 02, click on SQL 01 because you want to use this account for SQL 01. Then click OK. Then click OK again. And then put in the password. It's going to be America. 2025 come down here repeat the password it's gonna be uh america 2025 and you click restart yes and let it restart so it's going to restart and once it restart we are going to verify that the sales account running sql 02 and sql 01 are the same so yep i believe it it has restarted so we, we can just click on that say yes 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 everything is good so let me x out from here that's fine mm -hmm. just give it a few minutes i think i need to click okay okay now let me also verify that here the agent the account is running the agent is the same as the service account i always like the agent and the service account to be running on the same service account let me right click here i go to properties on properties and uh -huh. as you can see the account running the properties or the, the agent sorry is sql 02 but let me change the account to sql 01 so i know i'm going to be fast but go to location entire directory okay then you click cvs check the name then switch it to sql 01 okay okay then let's put in the password America capital letter 2025. Go down here, put uh, America 2025. Then we click apply. It's applying, so just wait for it. I click start, then click start. Yeah. And let's wait for it to start. And now it is good. Let's cancel. Let me click on it again, go to properties, and now it's running by SQL01, right? So that's the account name. I can cancel this, I verify. Come here again to double check, click properties. Now it's been run by SQL01, cool. So this HDC SQL02 is being run by the same service account. Let me cancel here. It's been run by the same service account that is running SQL01. So if I go to SQL01, I go to my red box, configuration manager, click yes. All right, click right here, go to properties. You see, SQL 01, yay. Agent, right click, go to properties, SQL 01. Yes, I know you are asking, is it possible to run multiple SQL servers with the same service account? Yes, or multiple SQL instances? Yes, it is possible to run multiple sql instances with the same service account even though it is not recommended for security reason right because if you have multiple sql instances running on the same service account and somebody stole that account then they can access all your service but for always on you have to run it on the same service account because that is how the jobs are connected that is how the two servers will be connected so they can do their replication all right with that being said i believe that we have come to the end of this wonderful class it was wonderful and trust me this is a very important class take it serious and one of those things that you will do a lot so during our next class we are going to restore and back up databases right and that is going to be really interesting so see the class bye bye ciao ciao i'm out